Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make the rifle from the Mandalorian. If you know me at all, you know that I love pretty much everything to do with Star Wars. And one of the things I'm really excited about is the first ever live action Star Wars show called The Mandalorian. Now as of today, the show's not even out yet, so I don't know a lot about the characters or how it's shot or any of that stuff, but I have seen the trailer and that got me pretty excited. I really wanna make something from the show, but I don't have a lot of source material yet because I haven't seen it. But in the trailer, one thing that sparked my imagination was the rifle that the main character carries on his back. We don't have a lot of details about the rifle yet, but I do have the toy. Now the toy comes with the rifle, and I'm gonna use this toy to get scale to the main character's height, and then start making up some of the details that I don't actually have the information about. So the first step is to take a picture of this next to a ruler, then we're gonna take it into Fusion 360. Once I had the picture in Fusion 360, I calibrated it to the scale that I wanted so that the rifle was about 60 inches long. Once I had that, I could start figuring out the measurements of the individual pieces of the rifle to start making them and putting them together. This entire thing is gonna be figuring it out as I go along, but I wanna start with the buttstock because that is the only thing on here that is a solid, obvious piece of wood. In Fusion, we traced out the profile of the buttstock and then printed it out on a paper template. Then I'm gonna stick that down to this big piece of basswood. Now this is the wrong color wood, but once I get it carved in here, I can stain it to be the right color. I got the rough shape cut out and then cut it down the thickness, so it's a little bit thicker than it's gonna need to be, but I think once I start shaping the contours, it'll get a little bit thinner. So next up, I'm gonna go to my smaller bandsaw that I have a thinner blade on to get closer to these contours. So I'm looking at the profile of the handle here of the buttstock and it definitely has some curves, it has some thicker parts and some thinner parts. So I'm just trying to sketch out kind of where that's gonna go and trying to keep it as symmetrical as possible between the two sides. I'm probably gonna cut one and then try to figure out a way to mirror that on the other side as I start to carve it down this way. I'm gonna use this to mark kind of a rough center line all the way down the middle of this. That way I have a reference point once I go to carve the second side. Obviously I've still got a really long way to go, but just uh, maybe 30 minutes of shaping got me to this point. And basswood has a lot to do with that. Basswood is great for carving. It's a really tight grain, but it's really lightweight. And it makes it super easy to carve in every direction. You don't have to worry so much about going with the grain.
So I think that's pretty much the shape. This really didn't take very long to get to. I will have to spend some time with some high grit just to get it really smooth so it'll take finish well, but it was pretty easy to make that. So now it's time to move on to the next piece, which I'm not exactly sure what that is. So next up, I found this aluminum pipe. It's actually really thin, really lightweight, and it just happens to be the scale diameter of the main barrel here. So we're gonna use this piece from the drawing, I know that I need about 34 inches of it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it long for now because I'm not exactly sure how these pieces are gonna attach, but basically, this is gonna be mounted in there along with some other pieces, and then it's just gonna start getting wrapped in all the details. I cut down another piece of basswood. This is gonna act as a base for everything else to be built onto. I'll probably end up putting some dowels in here to connect it to the buttstock. But I've also gotta cut out some sections for the knockouts and one for the barrel to sit down into. That's gonna go somewhere right in there. And then we'll start wrapping all this with the detail pieces to actually make it look better. I got the little receiver cut for the barrel to go in, and then I drilled a couple of these holes all the way through. Notice I've got a bigger hole on the top and a smaller hole on the bottom. That's so that I can sit this down in the receiver and then put a screw through the top down into the wood to hold the barrel in place. I've left the top hole bigger so that the screw can go all the way in and then seat on the bottom side of this pipe. But next up, I'm gonna to move to the site. I've got a piece of dowel here. I'm gonna put it on the lathe and turn it down to get all the details of that, but I'm gonna use this acrylic template that we cut on the laser. Now, this will help me know where all the details are, how deep they are, how they are in relation to each other. So I'm gonna just use this as I turn down this dowel. I was gonna use a Forstner bit to drill some small holes in the end of this just to make it look like it was actually hollow on the inside, but unfortunately I have just too little throat here on the drill press, so unfortunately I'm gonna have to take this off and do it by hand. Another way to do this, and probably the more accurate and safer way to do this, would be to put this in the tailstock on the lathe, mount this back in the lathe, and drive it in. Unfortunately, I don't really have my centers anymore because I cut this piece out, so I'm just kind of winging it, but that would be ideal if you thought ahead.
I'm kind of hopping around on this project because honestly I'm just making up each piece as I go, but I think the next step is going to be to attach these together, not permanently, but go ahead and get them seated. And to do that I'm going to use dowels. I'm going to use something I've never actually used before, which is a dowel center. So I'm going to drill two holes in this piece and then putting these little centers into those holes and then those will help me transfer the center of those holes onto the other piece of wood so they line up. Once again, I don't have enough space in this drill press to drill the holes I need, so I'm going to have to do this by hand, but ideally you would want to use a drill press to make sure that the holes are perpendicular to each other and to the rest of the material. I'm going to give this a shot. I honestly don't know if these holes are going to line up as well as they would have if I'd used a drill press, but let's find out. That's pretty good. And the good thing here is I can do a little bit of shaping just to get those in line, but it's actually better than I thought it would turn out to be. The next little piece I'm going to do is this coupler. At least that's what I'm calling it. I don't know, actually know what it is, but it's a piece right here in the middle of the barrel that connects the round barrel to a hexagon barrel on the front side. Mainly this is just a block with the edges knocked off and some details, so I'm going to make that out of another piece of wood, drill a hole in it, and slide it over the barrel. Last little thing on this piece is to add a detail, a little inset on each one of these edges. Now this already has the shape added. So what I'm going to do is put it on the crosscut sled, run it up to the blade, and then spin it around, just being really careful to keep my hands all the way away from the blade and make sure that this is backed up against the back of the sled. We also traced out some of the detail pieces and cut templates on the laser, and these are just to make sure that they fit and they're the right size and everything. Then we'll go back and cut these out of thicker material, but these are going to be some of the details that will be layered up to give the dimension on the side of the gun. So as we're moving down the gun, the next thing I want to work on is the tip down here at the end, and it is a small cone with these big forks sticking out of it. I'm not going to worry about the forks yet, but first I want to turn down this whole end piece. And these pieces are going to end up looking like metal. I'm going to paint them and distress them and everything to look like metal. And you could say, well, maybe you should just make them out of metal in the first place. I could, but it would take a lot longer and be a lot more expensive. I've got a ton of this basswood. It's great for carving and it actually works really quickly. Now we're going to need to cut a slot in this front section so that those big forks can go on. But first, I'm going to make the forks so I know how thick they are, then we'll figure out how to cut that slot. I've got sticky templates printed out for all these other detail pieces that wrap around the sides of the gun. And I'm going to stick these on different thicknesses of MDF, cut them out, and then put them in place.
So I've got a bunch of the details built up on this, but there's gonna be quite a bit more, and I think it's a lot of the same stuff, so I'm not gonna show you all the individual pieces being made, but basically I've just been layering up different types of wood, and I'm gonna have to go back over this entire thing with wood filler to fill in some of the seams where I've stacked the wood up, sand it down really well, and then start priming it to paint. I wanted to show you a couple of the pieces that we're 3D printing for this. There's one shape that's an octagon that goes over part of the barrel, and it just made more sense to 3D print this sleeve that fits right on top of the barrel rather than trying to make the outside shape of this. And that's because it needs to be really small and just a little bit bigger than the barrel itself. There's a couple other ones like the scope mount. This is gonna be printed out. There's gonna have two of these, and these are gonna mount to the rest of the gun to hold the scope. And then there's a few more details that we'll do here and there. But the next piece that we're gonna make are the big crazy looking forks that go at the end. We're gonna cut these out of MDF. Now obviously you can make any of these parts out of whatever material you want. A lot of people would probably make this out of aluminum because it looks like aluminum, but MDF is way cheaper. You could 3D print all of these parts or make them all out of wood or all out of metal. There's a thousand ways to do this stuff. Just do whatever works for you in the project that you're making. Even at this scale, one of the things that gives this detail that you can pick out are tiny little holes where there's supposed to be rivets or screws or something like that. So we're gonna fake those within these pieces by putting in a countersink and then putting in some really tiny screws. I'm gonna go ahead and countersink them, then finish the whole thing and then drive in the screws after it's painted. So you'll see a little bit of difference between the color of the screw and the color of the material. I could continue to add little details and pieces to this forever, but I'm gonna go ahead and stop here and start getting this ready for paint. I'm gonna cover the whole thing with filler primer, just like I would a 3D print, and that will fill in some of the wood grain and start to even out some of the surface. I'll do a couple of coats of that, sanding in between, and then we'll start adding silver to this. Once we get it fully covered in silver, then we'll do the weathering process. Both of these pieces are gonna end up looking like metal, hopefully, but then I've also got a couple of pieces that need to be stained. These are both supposed to be wood, and they're supposed to be dark wood, so I'm gonna have to find a stain that matches the reference photo that I have.
I'm wiping these pieces down with the tack cloth because this will get rid of all the tiny little dust that you can't really wipe off with anything else. To be honest, I hate putting stain on wood, so this is not something I do very often, but I know that this is one of the steps you should definitely do before you stain a piece of wood. I'm starting to lay out all the pieces here on the bench to figure out the order that I have to slide them together to get everything in the right place. And unfortunately, by sliding some of these pieces together, I'm also probably gonna ruin some of the paint. But once I get it all done, I'll just mask off the areas that I need to clean up and repaint those. Right now, I'm waiting on the finish for the wooden parts to dry. And we've got a few pieces on the 3D printer that we still are working on, and those are gonna have to get painted before they can go on. The next thing here is to figure out this little gas return tube on the bottom. We've made allowance for it in some of these pieces, and so now we've got to cut down a tube that's the right length to fit right here. The last piece to make was the trigger and the trigger guard. That whole assembly is in the paint booth right now being painted, so I think everything else is ready to start assembling. Now I have finally figured out the order of operations, so I'm just gonna start sticking this stuff together in the right order. I wanted to point out though, I'm gonna use E6000 as an adhesive to hold most of these pieces in place. The cool thing about this stuff is that it is a nice, strong bond, but if you need to separate a bond, you actually can. You can peel the things apart, and it ends up rubbing off kind of like rubber cement would. Another cool thing about E6000 is you can leave the squeeze out in place and after it dries, it comes off really easily. The last big piece to put on is the butt stock here, and unfortunately I can't use wood glue to attach this to that because that's painted, this has stain and polyurethane on it. So instead I'm gonna use the E6000. So at this point the dowels aren't really doing a whole lot of work, they're just really there for alignment. While I'm waiting for the glue to set up on these other parts, I'm gonna add a little detail that I started preparing earlier. This is a piece of two millimeter EVA foam. I sprayed it with Plasti Dip to seal it and then sprayed it with the same silver that I used everywhere else. And this is gonna mimic a piece of metal that wraps around and attaches these two pieces. So I'm gonna glue this down here and then glue it all along all the surface to wrap around to this 3D printed piece on the bottom.
While I'm waiting on that glue to dry for the trigger, I'm gonna go ahead and take some steel wool and run over these wooden parts. It's a little too shiny, even though it's a satin finish. It doesn't look worn, and I want it to look like it's old and it's been used a whole bunch. So we're gonna take this over just to knock down the finish, and it actually works really quickly. You don't have to push down very hard. This is 000 steel wool, by the way. So the scope is just out of a dowel, so it's got solid wood down in there, which doesn't look very realistic. So we cut out a few pieces of acrylic and stacked them up with a black layer in between. We're gonna drop these in and glue them in place just to make it look like it's got a lens. Now I'm ready for one of my favorite parts of any prop project, and that's the weathering process. This is where you make it look dirty and used and worn. I'm gonna use a few different things for that. One is a silver Sharpie. It's awesome for hitting high points to make them look like the paint got worn off. I'm also gonna use some rub and buff. This is kind of a wax paint mixture that you can wipe on and then rub off and it leaves a little metallic look. And then I'm gonna use some washes, some different grays and blacks watered down that you can just flood over a surface and then wipe away. It fills in all the cracks and makes it look dirty. One of the next pieces for this is to add some color to the end of this little fork section at the end of the gun. Now I'm going to use an airbrush for this and it's not something I have any experience doing, especially layering up multiple colors to get the same effect you would have on a piece of hot metal. So I found a couple of videos, I'll link them down in the description, and they gave some good advice on the layering technique. I'm going to give it a shot, but worst case I can just paint over it silver and try it again. I'm extremely happy with how this thing came out. And it was really cool because we didn't have a lot of reference photos, so there was a chance to make up some of the details and just figure out the pieces as we went along. Another cool thing was that this is not practical. It doesn't do anything, it doesn't have a purpose, except for the fact that I wanted it to exist. If you have a project like that that's not practical, it's just something you wanna see in the real world, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. And I encourage you, even if you don't have all the reference you need or all the tools you need, just get started on it. We're gonna have another exclusive video just for our Maker Alliance members that talks about some of the other details not covered in this video. And if you wanna find out more about that, go to iliketomakestuff.com slash join. We've got tons of other videos of all different types that you may be interested in. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I think we've got enough of the pieces here together to put together, every, put to get together, together, together. Today, we're gonna to make the rifle from the Mandalorian. Zoom the wrong way again. From the Mandalorian fart. Pew! Doink. That's a quick and easy way to make something look like, oh, how did I, dang it. <clears throat> All right, ready? Yeah.